The Nigerian military says it has thwarted the activities of economic saboteurs, including destroying a total of 51 illegal refineries across the nation. At a media briefing on ongoing military operations, Acting Director of Defense Media Operations, Bernard Onyuko, says troops from Operation Delta Safe deactivated the sites which were identified in Rivers, Abia, Cross Rivers, Bayelsa, Akwaibo, and Imo states. In this period, troops continue to track illegal oil operations by conducting land, maritime, and air patrols, as well as raid operations on criminal enclaves. Some of these operations were carried out at various sites and discovered and deactivated illegal oil refining sites, bunkering sites, impounded some vessels as well as other equipment and items used for illegal bunkering activities in the area. Additionally, 23 criminal elements were arrested and 73 rounds of 7.62 millimeter ammunition, five cartridges and two AK-47 rifles, one double barrel gun, one pump action gun, three locally produced pistols among other items were recovered in the course of these operations. Consequently, a total of 317,450 liters of refined automotive gas oil, 80 liters of dual purpose kerosene, 159,000 liters of stolen crude oil were recovered in the course of the operation. Well, for more on this, let's uh, cross to defense and security analyst, Dr. Kabiru Adamu, who's joining us remotely. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kabiru Adamu, for joining us on Newsnight tonight. Good to see you. Well, um, some experts are saying that uh, indeed, if uh, Barnawi is dead, the ISWAP leader, it will not uh, you know, be much of a dent or an impact on uh, ISWAP activities because of its strong, very strong uh, structure. Do you share the same view? Um, yes, uh, Ngozi. Good evening to you and Indy and to all the viewers. Um, the news of uh, Al Barnawi's death first filtered in in August, um, late August, um, early September. So more than a month now. And um, from that time till now, the group is still active. It's still, you know, carrying on attacks. Uh, even though we're aware that um, a significant number of the uh, fighters have been surrendering, but that is more on the side of the Jamaat al ahl al Dawat al Jihad, not um, the Islamic State in West Africa province. Um, so it appears whatever transition or leadership transition uh, arrangement it had um, has worked uh, for it, at least for now. Um, it, it also appears that whether uh, the absence of Al Barnawi, if that is confirmed, um, is has meant anything to the group. It has not affected its ability to carry carry on with the kinds of attack, especially the asymmetric attacks that it is it, it's been um, you know waging in the last few weeks and months. So yes, they do have some form of succession uh, plan, and that that plan has been quite effective so far. From what I get, at you're saying you're saying it does not uh, turn the skills either for. Uh, the fight against insurgency uh, or against. But then the army chief refuses or refused to give details of how al Banawi was killed. Why do you think this is so? Um, the circumstances of the briefing, uh, it was a presidential briefing um, organized by the presidency. I think it was not a place for such operational disclosures. Perhaps if um, the in circumstance, the platform was for operational discussions, maybe he would have provided that. On the other side, um, I wasn't there. I don't know if the journalists that were there pressed him for that kind of details. Uh, again, um, I, I wouldn't know that, but it would have been really helpful, uh, at least uh, to put a lead on uh, this issue. Uh, like I said, the issue has been raging, at least within the intelligence community since the end of August, and we're already in October. And that issue is yet to be finalized. Yes, uh, this statement by the chief of defense staff, it's a huge development. Uh, this is him, uh, the whole institution of the Nigerian uh, defense capacity and capability saying that they've confirmed the death of Al-Barnawi. 
On the other hand, it's instructive to also mention that the um, IF on its own has not com issued any statement to either confirm or dispute the debt of um, Al-Barnawi. Meanwhile, we know that in the past, every time any of its leaders had died, um, it would issue a statement one way or the other. Uh, so it's like I said, it's, um, it would have been really helpful if the chief of defense staff had mentioned uh, how or in what circumstances he died and how they were able to verify um, the debt. And uh, would you say that uh, the uh, delivery of about six super tucanos and now uh, all 12 may have contributed to uh, the seeming successes that the Nigerian forces have been recording? And would you also say that uh, the seeming rivalry between Iswap and Boko Haram may have weakened the ranks of the terrorists and uh, is again for the Nigerian side? Um, so to the first part of your question, the Super Tucanos, um, as far as I know, they've not yet, they are not yet operational. Um, we're hoping that very soon the uh, military would launch them and that they would uh, assist significantly to both the counter-terrorism and the anti-banditry campaigns by the Nigerian Air Force. Uh, we're also hoping that they would um, add significantly to the intelligence capabilities of the Nigerian military. So we're uh, very hopeful that in the coming um, months, once they are operational, uh, we'll see those kind of changes in these two uh, major areas that I've mentioned, as well as other uh, less significant areas um, within the military operations in general in Nigeria. Now to the second point of your question, the fratricidal war between the two uh, major sites uh, in, in the Lake Chad Basin, that is the Jamaat al-Arifin al al Wal Jihad and the Islamic State in West Africa province has been raging for quite a while. Now, um, in the specific case of um, Yusuf, um, uh, sorry, um, Habib uh, Yusuf, uh, he was appointed in 2016, the uh, Amir. Uh, he reigned until 2018. And then uh, he was removed for reasons unknown. Um, some said it was because there were insiders from within the group that did not agree to his style. And then uh, he was appointed again as an interim leader in um, mid-2021, uh, uh, this, this year. So clearly, there were some disputes within the group regarding his leadership uh, capabilities and leadership style. Whether that contributed to the fatal war or not, what we know is that a significant portion of the membership of both groups died from that fatal war. It's also very possible that uh, Sheikau, the leader of Jamaat al 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 Dawati Wal Jihad, and um, Al Barnawi were affected either in terms of their popularity or lack of it uh, by this fatal war. So, yes, it's an opportunity for the Nigerian military, and I'm hoping that the, uh, the intelligence capabilities within the Nigerian military is taking advantage of the opportunity. Uh, clearly, the two groups now lack. Uh, the uh, both leaders really have had a long uh, time at the reign of affairs of these two groups. Now that they are not there, there will definitely be some impact in terms of the leadership structure within within the group. And I'm hoping that the intelligence capabilities in Nigeria would take advantage of that gap. Defense and security analyst uh, Dr. Kabiru Adamu, glad to have you join us on Newsnight.